So I really wanted to make over these thrifted items into something that I thought would be really fun and useful for a new studio space I'm about to make. I found this old lamp at the side of the road and I really felt it could have some really good potential. So I'm first going to start to clean this thing and see what I could do with the lampshade. I've also been carting around this desk that I've been dying to do a new makeover and I thought maybe even adding in the vase might be some great projects to get started on for a studio space that I'm currently working on. The desk that I have, I actually bought that at the Facebook marketplace probably four or five years ago for a hundred bucks and I have wanted to sand this down for the longest time. So I'm going to have to try to get all of this wood stain off and it actually looks like there's a couple of stains on this desk. So I'm going to start with a 60 grit and I really thought that this was going to go by really quickly. I had it in my mind that this week's project was going to go by super quick. It was going to be fun, simple, but I was really wrong. And I even thought it would be great to go out and treat myself to going for a little paddle board, maybe enjoy some of the summertime. And I'd wish I had given myself a lot more time because I went into panic mode trying to get this project finished. I know sometimes sanding can be a big job, but I really thought by the whole architecture of this desk, it was going to go by so easy. Again, I was totally wrong. I wasn't exactly sure what kind of wood this desk was, but I'm almost going to say it was probably a cedar. What I did notice is because I've had it packed away for quite a while that I don't know what happened, but at some point, I guess the top portion of it, it actually had broke off the side of the legs. So I'm going to have to put a metal bracket onto that to fix it. But first thing I'll do is sand it. And I ended up starting with a 60 grit because the stain was so deep into the wood. Depending on what you're going to sand, it can sometimes go really fast. I have had that happen. And I kind of had that projection for this project, but again, I was wrong. The stain that's on here or stains was a lot. And what I noticed is I was actually gripping my sander and the handle way too hard. And I had to really teach myself right from the beginning was to hold the sander more lightly and let the sander do the work because your hand can get fatigued so quickly. I really thought that the base was gonna go by very quickly and it didn't and my hand was actually getting tired so I actually had to plan for a lot more breaks. The stand of this desk only actually sits up when it's underneath the desk. The base of the desk went relatively quickly, so I was pretty convinced I'm going to have lots of time to get this project done, so I decided to treat myself to a little zip line with some friends. This little tool was amazing and it's a thin tiny little sander it's a little belt sander i had it all planned that this was really going to help for the inside of the desk to get to those hard to reach cornered areas and that part of the plan worked for my timing on this desk then i proceeded to get to the base of the desk and when i got inside the amount of time that it took me now i'm showing you in fast forward but it was a total since i started the base and since I've gotten to the top part of this desk, it has been well over six hours. And I was at this point where I really just thought, you know what, I might just have to do a different style makeover. But I thought to myself, no, you're just getting into patches that have a lot of residual oils, maybe some cleaners. Who only knows? It was a thrifted piece to begin with. So I just stuck with my vision but it ended up taking me two full days to try to get through actually sanding this thing and I didn't have it planned for that amount of time. But I am glad I stuck through it even for the extra time it took me to get all of that residual stain off. The orbital sander worked great for all the sides, the edges and the corners. It was not a problem. And then of course the little tiny thin belt sander that I've got really helped with those really tiny, tiny areas. 
I had this whole visionary going with what I wanted to put into this space and I'm currently working on this studio slash office makeover now, which I'll be finished for next week. But I got to this point that I've gotten this far in the sanding, I couldn't really give up at this point, even for the amount of time and how much I've already gotten done at this point. I'm like, I've got to finish this. I've got to make this vision happen. But one trick with this amount of sanding is to make sure that you will change out your sandpaper discs because they do wear down quite quickly and I'm still only using the 60 grit. I will have to use another grit and go over everything to smooth it out. I'm so thankful I bought the club pack of the sanding discs that I needed because I had to swap out quite a few to get all of this stain off of this desk. I really love the architecture and design of this desk. I like its simplicity. I like the fact that it has a lid. I can put it down when things get a little bit messy, but I knew if I just put the labor into it, I definitely could make it something that I really love. But sanding will test your patience. You do have to be patient with it. You have to give yourself breaks or you're gonna get frustrated or you're just not gonna finish the project. At this point, I was even kind of dreading having to go over the entire piece again with the 220 grit. But when I did that, it went a lot faster. It's always getting that initial stain off that's the labor intensity. I was super proud of myself. I stuck through it for the last two days and I got through all the fine detail even with that little handy thin sander to get around to the corners and the edges. It kind of worked out to go zip lining this week because it actually just kind of refreshed me and it actually helped with the energy that I needed to get this project done. So I decided after a really long look at this lampshade, I just decided I didn't care for the shape of it because I thought maybe I'll just re put some new fabric onto it, maybe put some new trim. But first thing I gotta make sure is that it actually works properly and I was lucky, it does. So I'm just gonna use degreasing soap and I'm actually just gonna scrub down the base because I really actually like the bronze look that it has. But before I got too excited, I've got to make sure that I can get all of the crud off just by giving it a really good scrub down. If I couldn't get it clean the way I was envisioning it, I figured, well, then I'll go ahead and paint it. But I had to wait to see what happened first. So the one and a half inch bell sander wasn't getting into the tiniest little corners. So we have this little rotary tool, which has got all kinds of little sanding and buffer attachments, which was perfect. It's almost like something that you would see at one of those nail salons, but it worked out perfect to, to get into those tiny little corners. It's a great little tool to have for those even smaller little wood projects that you have. It is so worth it and it really helped out with those tiny little corners. So now that I have everything done and everything's been smoothly sanded with the 220, I'm now gonna go and use just a regular white paint wash. So it's 50% water to 50% paint. Sometimes you might have to alter that depending on the paint product you're using. I'm just using a household paint by Benjamin Moore in a white color. And I'm again, just using that 50% of water to 50% paint. But sometimes you might have to play with that ratio depending on the surface that you're doing. So I always recommend to people to try a inconspicuous area in the back and make sure that the formula of 50-50 works because sometimes it might you might have to alter that a little bit, meaning you might need a little bit more paint or a little bit more water to get the wash tone that you're looking for. When you're using a paint wash, kind of like a stain onto a wood, it's really important to use a lint-free cloth and always try to make brush strokes to go with the grain of the wood. Anytime you're doing a paint wash, I always find it really helpful to work in small sections. I find that working in the small sections a lot more helpful to control the paint wash because it actually absorbs into a raw wood very quickly. So this way I can wipe it back and again, keeping that consistency with going with the wood grain. So 
So what I'm going to do is leave the top to dry and I'm going to leave a little opening so that way the full inside will dry completely with giving enough air circulation. This way I can get the base completed. I have to admit the whole project kind of tested my patience a little bit but I am so glad I actually finished what I envisioned. Once I'm ready to use the desk I will seal it probably with a clear wax or a polyurethane and this will help seal and protect the wood. So I'm really happy I found this floor lamp and it cleaned up really nice, but I opt to just use a lampshade I already have or will purchase something similar to match it and give it more of an updated style. So I'm going to use a drywall spackling and this is a really fun way to make a old vase or something similar kind of look like an old vessel. I upcycled this old vase probably like two three years ago. I've already painted it a few times and this is such a fun project to play with. I started with a base coat of a really dark gray or you could use a black in any paint that you like. Projects like this are just fun experiments and it's just a fun way to play with texture. So use any household paints or even acrylic paints that you have already on hand. So I put a base coat of that dark gray, it's almost a black color, and let that dry completely. And now I'm just going to spread all of this spackling everywhere and then I'm going to brush it out with the chip brush just to kind of smooth it so there's no spackling that's kind of loose onto the vase. Now in order to paint more layers on top of using a spackle product like that is I'm actually using a moist towel and I'm going to put the paint onto the towels that I'm using and I'm just going to dab it on. The main reason I want to do that is because I don't want to oversaturate the spackling or it will start to crumble because that's what's going to happen when there's too much moisture. This way I'm limiting how much moisture I'm putting onto the spackling. So I found that the, this was the easiest way was just to layer the paint onto the moist towel and dab on my layers. So now I'm kind of using this coat of three different color tones. I've got the black as my base. Now I'm using a kind of a light beige as well as a little bit of like a I'm not even going to say like a brown cocoa color, but I'm trying to use those kind of earthy neutral tones as well as a little bit of white on top. It is one of those DIY projects that you can't really go wrong. It's really just building layers. But I love how the spackling gives this really, really beautiful organic texture. I'm going to use the Rust-Oleum Clear Matte to seal it, let that dry, then I'm going to use the white wax. I have ziplined a few times, but I have to say this last run was exhilarating. So I waited a full 24 hours before I put the white wax on just to make sure everything was adhered and really dried well and it had no issues whatsoever and this is really going to give a lot of amazing highlights to the entire project. Again, just giving it kind of that authentic vessel-like look. And this too will also bring out a lot of that deep, deep actual texture that was made through the spackling. I think the extra manual labor was well worth it. I'm really looking forward to sharing what I'm going to do to this whole space and create an office studio in next week's video.
Thank you so much for watching this week's video and I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon. Until then, take care.